Hey Warriors, Coach Moyer here. When they asked me to uh, do a chapel for you guys, I was really excited because I love getting the opportunity to share with you some of the things that God's teaching me. So I'm just going to share a little nugget with you today uh, about what God's teaching me. But first, we have our, uh, those of you that have been my students, you understand I was given a gift for Christmas. It was called the Bad Dad Joke Book. And every day, it's a calendar that I get a bad dad joke. So I'm going to start off with a bad dad joke today. So today's bad jet dad joke is... How did the ball of yarn get a job at the gas station? How did the ball of yarn get a job at the gas station? He pulled some strings. There we go. I know you're laughing uproariously right now at your house. Thanks for humoring me. That's my bad dad joke for the day. Well, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what God's teaching me. Um, some of you guys that know that, that are my students, you understand that uh, um, I've been dealing with some health issues the last few years. Uh, acid reflux has come up and kind of presented itself in a bunch of different ways. One, I began to lose my voice. It was very difficult for me to speak. Um, but the, the big thing was really I was beginning to have some trouble inside. I went and did some tests, and the docs told me I was developing a precancerous cells in my esophagus. Um, that was, uh, that's no fun. That's not what I want. Um, and so that's began a process that started about three and a half, four years ago, where I've lost a lot of weight. I can't eat some of my favorite things. I can't eat chocolate. I can't eat pizza. Um, and uh, um, it's been a difficult struggle for me as I wrestle with the unknown, uh, as I wrestle with what does this mean for me long term? How will it impact my health? Um, how will it uh, uh, change my life? Um, a lot of you know that, and I've shared that pretty openly. Uh, a lot of people don't know, however, that about three, four years ago as well, I began to, actually it started about six or seven years ago, I began to lose feeling in my feet. And my toes um, were got tingly, and it slowly progressed to where um, I've lost a significant sense of feeling in my feet. It's called peripher peripheral neuropathy. It's a big word, peripheral neuropathy. But all it means really is my nerves are dying, and there's not a lot I can do about it. And uh, um, it's just an inconvenience right now. It will progress at some point, and it may become a problem where it would be harder to walk. But right now, I don't really feel too much uh, inconvenience to it. But it's another one of those things where I go, man, this is not what I wanted. This is not how I thought life was going to turn out. I I'm so active. I don't want to be able to lose the ability to walk or drive a car or the but those may be things in 20, 30 years from now that will impact me. And so what's really been a struggle for me is how am I responding to the things in my life that I don't like and that I don't want? How do I uh, view these things? Because there's a period of time with my acid reflux where it caused me significant anxiety. I'd lay awake at night going, do I, do I have cancer? Am I going to develop cancer? Am I going to get sick? Am I going to be able to do the things that I love to do? So the anxiety gripped me. It caused me to actually lose a little bit of sleep. And uh, it obviously changed my life. I love a good pizza, just like anybody else. It's one of my favorite foods in the world. I can't eat pizza anymore. Well, I can now. I just can't have tomato sauce. I can't have all the other fun stuff that I like on it. But it's okay. What God's beginning to show me, and he's working on it still, is, uh, um, is that can you, you may want things for your life, but how are you going to be when you get something that you don't want? How are you going to act? How are you going to view me? How are you going to walk in faith when you get things that you don't like and when you get things that you don't want? And my, thought, my thoughts go back to Jesus, and it's really one of those times that's really appropriate during Easter. And uh, um, in Luke chapter 22, uh, it tells a story in the Passion Week as Jesus began uh, his progression towards the cross and then ultimately towards the resurrection and the last time that he gathered with his disciples in Luke it says he withdrew about a stone's throw behind them knelt down and prayed father if you're willing take this cup from me yet not my will but yours be done and then an angel from the Lord appeared to him and strengthened him see I, I realize that Jesus had the same kind of a situation he had stuff going on in his life that he didn't want to be happening to him he didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to endure the pain. He didn't want to do the shame. He didn't want to have all the negative things that he knew he was facing in the future. And it's interesting. I thought he felt comfortable 
praying to the Father to take it away from him. Take it away from him. And, uh, um, but in the end, he submitted his will to God. He said, not my will, but yours be done. And that's what's actually brought me comfort as I watch Jesus' example. As as he encounters some bad some bad cars that he's dealt. He's he's done nothing wrong and he's got to go to the cross. Um, but uh, uh, he in the midst of it says, Not my will, but yours be done, Father. And that's really how I found peace in the midst of my health struggles. Um, I have to get to the point where I say, God, it's not what I want. Change it if you want me. I'd love for you to change it. But not my will, yours be done. If if you want me to lose all feeling in my feet, if you want me to walk down a road of cancer, not my will, but yours be done. And so I would guess that a lot of us are going through things right now that we don't like, that we don't want, that don't feel good, some of your folks have, have lost their jobs. Um, some of you may know people that are sick. Uh, the best man at our wedding, his daughter, got uh, um, coronavirus and was, uh, after struggling with asthma, she turned out okay, but it was a stressful time. There's a lot of things going on right now, and there are a lot of bad things going on in the world. And we could read the headlines, and we can be worried for ourselves. We can be worried for our country. We could be worried for our parents. Um, and the truth is, God's ultimately in control, and he's got this. But we don't know, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. And my thoughts go back to Paul, where he said, Hey, listen, uh, 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 three times I asked God, take this thorn from my flesh. He had something going on physically. We don't really know what it is. People have guessed it may have been. Uh, uh, he had problems with his eyesight. Uh, people guess it may have been something else. But we don't really know. But his response was interesting. He said, uh, for Christ's sake I delight in my weaknesses because in weaknesses and hardship and in insults and persecutions when I'm weak you are strong our weakness and our hardships are opportunities for us to experience God's strength and to display God's strength well, that's not what I want I want people to see how strong I am or I want people to think um, that, that you can't hurt me. One of the things I say all the time to my kids and my my team is you can't you can't hurt steel, right? I want people to think that I'm I'm steel, but I'm not, right? But God is made His power is made more evident when we are weak. So if you're feeling weak at the moment, if you're encountering situations that you don't like, it's probably not an if. We probably all are. Um, if we're encountering things that we don't want. I just want to encourage you to think of Jesus as he made that progression on Good Friday to the cross. When he came to a choice, it was okay for him to say, I don't want this. He went to God and prayed, God, take this from me. But then in the end, he was able to say, not my will, but yours be done. If this is a path you want me to walk, God, I'll walk it. And uh, um, I want to encourage you guys to ask God, to change the things that you don't like. But I'm going to encourage you to set your hearts on his will and not ours. We don't know what that looks like. But he uh, um, he does. And he can be trusted. And he's not going to leave us alone. The cool thing from the first verse in Luke is that an angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him. When we cry out to him, when we pray, when we say, not my will but yours, be done. He'll strengthen us. He'll send angels to attend to us. He'll show his power through us. He'll bring his power to bear in our lives. It may not always change our outcome. You know, the two things that I talked about, the acid reflux and my neuropathy. The acid reflux, we've gotten good reports. The last three tests I've had have said there's no abnormal tissue. It's not even precancerous anymore. That's that's a praise God. That's changed. And so uh, I, I don't have anywhere near the level of um, concern, but I'm still doing the things I need to do. The neuropathy hadn't changed. It may never change. And in the end, I have to go, not my will, but yours be done. So my encouragement to you warriors is in the midst of your weakness, just ask God to change what you don't want. Take the steps that he wants you to take to change what you don't want. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. It's hard, I know. 
but in the midst of it, say, God, not my will, but yours be done. And when we do that, he'll give us our strength. He'll give his strength to us. And then his power will be made perfect in us. The beautiful thing about Jesus praying those prayers was that on, on Friday, it looked bleak. But on Sunday, it all got better. So if you're feeling like Friday's hard, if you're feeling like you're walking down a path you really don't want to, just know that in the end, it may be Friday. Jesus went to the cross on Friday. Jesus died a gruesome death on Friday. But Sunday's coming. And that's the awesome message of, each, a message of Easter that we have, is that the bad things that we encounter here in life are not the end. Jesus encountered bad things too. But he allows us to go through them, knowing that in the end, Sunday's coming. I wish you all the best, Warriors. Can't wait to see you again. I hope we get to, to uh, do commencement and do all the fun senior things and graduation. But if not, know that you're in my heart and you're in my thoughts and prayers. Wish you the best. Have a great day.